Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. We come together today to celebrate the joyous salvation that we come to know. It's Easter Sunday. As general announcements, there is a special offering today. You can find that information in your bulletin. This is one of the Presbyterian special offerings. All funds that go to that particularly help with disaster relief and helping those that are in times of crisis. So there should be an envelope in your bulletin. You can also send that back next week if you don't have funds for that this week. Uh, so we'll be accepting that throughout this Sunday and next Sunday. Beyond that, there's no real other announcement that it's Tuesday night is our next evening service. There will be a dinner with that this time, except it'll be at a slightly different time. We will be eating it at 5.30 for dinner, and then the service will start at 6.30. This is to help some people that have more time-consuming jobs be able to get there without having to rush or feel constrained. So that's our next evening service is actually this Tuesday. Four services in one week. We're doing good. All right. And if I start to seem loopy up here at any point during the service, it's because I'm surrounded by pollen I'm allergic to. But it's fine. It'll be OK. We will get through it together. Are there any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, let us dedicate our hearts and minds to the worship of our Savior in prayer. Lord our God, we come together today to worship you, to praise your name, to celebrate the truth of who you are. We have walked through Lent, we have walked through the death, and now we come to life. Help us then, Lord, to feel your presence among us, to celebrate this truth, and dedicate our lives more fully as we follow you and be your disciples in the world. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Would you please stand and sing with me our first hymn today, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Turn our hearts and minds to our time of prayer, knowing that God has risen from the dead to save us from our own deaths, that his grace covers all the ways we may have fallen short. Let us pray the prayer of confession found in our order of worship today. Jesus, our Savior, forgive us for the ways we fail to hear your truth in our lives. We grow confident in our authority, pushing aside the voices of those who are less. Mind us that we are all saved, only by what you have done for us. Help us to listen for your words, wherever the Spirit calls us to us in our lives. Amen. Amen. 
Beloved, you are held in the assured power of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name you are forgiven. Would you please stand and join me in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And we come into a time of prayer for our community. Where any joys or concerns that are out, you are welcome to share for us to pray over this morning, if there be any. Pray for Bonnie. He's had a big month. He had a big month. We'll pray for the loud voice of my daughter in the back. <laughs> just carries. It's okay. She's like her dad. It just fills the room. It's okay. Seeing no others, would you please join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, we gather today to worship you. To come to a Savior who died for us and rose from the dead for us that we might not fear death again, that we may not mourn for those who have lost, but know we will see them in you. Help us to follow you. Help us to trust in the truth of a resurrected Lord and Savior who came to save us, that appears to those who are outcasts and welcomes them into his kingdom. Remind us that you are the ruler of creation and that you died for your creation and redeemed your creation. Help us to be a people that do well with what you've given us. Help us to be a people that seek your blessings in the lives of around us, the flourishing of the nature you've blessed us with, that you rose into life, not into a city, but a garden. Help us one day to build kingdoms that follow your trajectory. Give us eyes to see a world as you see it, one of love, of mercy, of grace, seeking all those who are lost. This is a time of celebration, Lord. Easter is the declaration to the world that you have won. That no force of evil will ever be lasting forever. That your victory is secure. That the darkness we might see around us is fleeting. We pray for your church throughout the world today as we celebrate in all corners that the bells would ring out, that the world would know that this is a day to celebrate. Where there is hardships and difficulties, help us to proclaim hope for those who have been hurt and wounded. We pray for a war-torn world. We pray that your spirit would bring peace, that those who seek senseless violence would stop, that those who have suffered in Ukraine would know you are near, that those who suffer in countries where they cannot proclaim your name without punishment know you are near, that you come to each of us, that you stand with each of us, and that you hear our voices cry out, Hosanna, save us. And you have done so. We pray that no voice would be left unheard, no person forgotten, that your grace and kingdom would be established here and now in all corners of this world, that you would return to us and show us a true king, one who cares for each person and loves them for who they are. We pray for our community, where you put our church, that your blessings will pour out on our families and our friends and our neighbors. But we know the truth of Easter is for each person. We know that you are a savior who walked among the outcasts. So you, we pray that you would be with the strangers, with the shut-ins, the outcasts, with the wounded, those that society tries to push aside and forget. Let us see them truly and let them know they are loved. We know who we serve, a Lord who washed us clean, the Lord who called us to be servants of one another. So help us proclaim this Easter truth. For there might be sorrow, sickness, or suffering, send your spirit to bring comfort and healing. We pray 
for those who cannot be with us, whether they are ill at home, stuck in a hospital. We pray for the many names on our prayer list. We pray for the things that weigh upon our hearts this morning, and we lift them up to you into this moment, that we might better know the joy of this day and focus our hearts upon you. Lord, all these things we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Turn our hearts and minds to serve the Lord who saved us by giving to him what we have from our offerings. Would you join me today in our daily offering? <laughs> what do you like about Easter? Celebrate with your family. Easter hunting for eggs. You get to open them and there's stuff in there. Money, grass, lots of candy. What does the Easter bunny do? He hides the eggs. He's a person that's dressed up in a costume. Who is Jesus? Jesus is like a person God. He is God's son. What does Jesus look like? Long brown hair and a brown beard. And he's got like a robe on. He has this belt, like what karate people wear, I think. Who are the disciples? Twelve chosen followers of Jesus. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, and Valphius, Thaddeus, Simon, Judas, Bartholomew. They're the good guys. What did Jesus teach? How to pray and that God's real. To always love one another when it's hard. Teaching them about Christmas and Valentine's Day. What kinds of miracles did Jesus do? He turned water into wine. He made five loaves and two fishes spread a long way. He helped people if they were sick. He walked on water. There was a storm and it was all windy and I said, Jesus, Jesus. And then he calmed it down so, so that they won't be scared. What would be a really cool miracle for him to do? For me to be a superhero like Batman. Let me ride a shark. Fix the government. What did they eat at the Last Supper? Bread and like some dipping sauce. Take a nuggets and french fries. And there's the juice. Some vegetables with chocolate on it. Why did some people not like Jesus? That everybody was calling him king. They didn't believe that he was God's son. They thought he would only hang out with the people who had done no sin, but he helped the sinners because they're the ones who needed help. What did those people do to Jesus? There were swords trying to capture him, whipped him, and put a crown of thorns on his head, and made him carry the cross a long way. Put him on a cross and stabbed him. They hurted his heart. He died on Good Friday. And then somebody put him in a tomb that had this big rock over it. What happened on Sunday morning? He grew from the ground. He rose from the dead. What did the disciples do when they saw Jesus? Very afraid, thought he was a ghost. They saw the scars, they touched him. Jesus, Jesus is alive, and my love him. They were so happy. How do we follow Jesus? Confess our sins. We ask him into our heart by praying. And then he's like in our heart. <laughs> Why did Jesus do all of this? It was all for us because he loves us. He said, I don't want them to be scared. And whenever they're hurt, I want to help them. We love you, Jesus.
and join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Holy Spirit, bless these offerings to transform our world around us into the new life of Easter. Amen. And join and sing with me one day, number 288. You may be seated. Turn our hearts and minds to our scripture passages, the first of which is from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, 
but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And our gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you. While he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the leaven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. There is love that came for us, humble to a sinner's cross. You broke my shame and sinfulness. You rose again, victorious. Faithfulness Through the storm and through the fire, there is truth that sets me free. Jesus Christ, who lives in me. You are stronger, you are stronger. Sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus, you are Lord of all. No beginning and no can deny. your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher, be lifted higher, be lifted higher. 
You are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me. It is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all. You are stronger, you are strong. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words I speak to say be glorifying to you. I pray that the Spirit would come upon each of us, teaching us how to better follow you in our lives, to declare the truth of Easter morning to all around us. I ask these things in your name. Amen. He is risen. That is the truth of Easter day. Today is our last in a sermon series. For those of you that haven't been with us, we've been walking through challenges to our discipleship as we live in a modern world, a world that poses many different problems for us, but in many ways are the same challenges that we've faced throughout all time, the same challenges that are presented to us in Scripture. They have been a challenges of our authority, challenges of our discipleship because of our fear, our misunderstandings of how righteousness works, the challenge of jealousy, the challenge of money, keeping up appearances. And finally today, on this Easter Sunday, is a last one that might seem a little odd to you. Privilege. Especially when we are talking about Easter Sunday. It might not seem obvious to you that our scriptures actually have a lot to say about that. Both of them, actually. Peter's discourse and acts to those who are present in Jerusalem is very much about pointing out that Jesus came for everybody. And that his message is being proclaimed not by the people you might expect. That Jesus doesn't play favorites. That's actually the literal word Peter uses. And on Easter Sunday, when often we get caught up in the stories, we forget a very important detail. And it's one that is actually in every single version of the story. It's in Mark's, it's in Matthew's, it's in Luke's, and it's in John's. And it might not seem that important, but it is. Who did Jesus first appear to in every account of the story? Who might you expect him to go to, honestly? I mean, it's got to be the disciples, right? That's who's going to get the words of God first, those 12 men who've followed him for all those days and years. These are the expected ones. They've been trained, they've been taught, they've seen him transfigured. Jesus, when you get risen from the dead, of course you're going to go to the disciples. No. He appears to women. The women first. In every single version of the story, that's who the risen Savior goes to. And that might not seem like a big deal to you, but it was back then. It was very weird for Jesus to do that back then. When Jesus was alive, women were very much second-class citizens, generally viewed as property. You didn't have rights. You didn't have a voice. Your best hope was if you were married. Now, there were few women that managed to get wealth, but they were very, very not the norm. And so, by Jesus coming to the women first, he is lifting up the status of those who are usually put off to the side. And even in the story it happens. Because when those women go and tell the disciples, what's it say they do? Do they go, oh, what wonderful truth you've told us. He is risen indeed. No. It says they didn't believe them. In every version. They have to go see it for themselves. Why would the gospel writers include this in every version of the Easter narrative. And in fact, in Mark's version, more than likely in the original, it ends there. The women go up and they say he's risen, and the disciples are all in shock and afraid and don't believe him, and the story ends. 
Why? And why do we often not even focus on this? It's included because it's very important that we realize who the mission of Christ is for. What Easter is all about. What church is about. What a Savior dying on a cross is about. It's about everybody. He doesn't play favorites. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've lived. There is no place of privilege in the kingdom of God. No one person's voice that is better than another. That's the truth. We're called to be servants. We're called to proclaim he's risen. Because look around the room. Take a second. Do it. Look at your neighbors. Look at each other. Each of them has a story to tell about how Jesus is their Savior. Or could be. If you're not a Christian, that's fine. But your voice is as powerful as mine in declaring the truth of Easter Sunday. This pulpit is great to teach. This pulpit is great to inspire, to give you lessons, to help you know how to navigate your life. But my voice here isn't going to change the world if your voice isn't out there. I am not the one. I do have a responsibility, but not a privilege. You are the ones to declare it. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or Asian. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. It doesn't matter if you're young or if you're old if you're wealthy or if you're poor, if you're a drug addict or if you're clean, if you're incarcerated or have lived by the rules your whole life, if you're educated or if you're not, each of you is of equal standing in the kingdom of God. By Jesus appearing to the women, he throws out all the rules of saying, you're in and you're out. No, he says you're all invited in. Every single person. I am a savior who saves anybody. I am a king for the lepers. I am a healer for anyone who wants healed. I am a friend to the friendless. I'm a companion for all eternity. I want you all. And how sad it is that for so long the church messes it up because we expect only certain voices to be correct. We sit in our places of privilege, and we silence the voices of those who look different, even though that might be the exact place where Christ is talking to us. People, we need to learn to listen better. Because unfortunately, as wonderful as Easter is, we might be missing where Easter is happening today in the lives around us, because we're stuck looking in the wrong places. We're like the disciples. We hear others that proclaim, this is what Jesus has called us to do. This is how we should be. These are the things we're called to. And we say, mm, you don't look right. You're not playing the part right. you got to fit our standards. And we tone them down. We've hushed them up for countless years. Because it needs to be a white married man that's around 52 years old with a family that's gone well. That's the voice of the church. That's who tells the truth. I fit two of those. Not all of them. I'm not old yet. But I am called to proclaim this truth. But I'm not the only one. And for too long, the church has been about the people in the pulpit, the rock stars, the superstars, the ones that know it all and very little about the people in the pews. About the voices of those who are down the street that don't dare go to church because they don't look right. Because they don't feel like they belong. Because they have done something too wrong. Because that church they know has done something wrong in the past and hasn't repented of it. Because we don't mix well. And they're wounded. And yet Christ is sitting there next to them in their homes eating a meal with them, wishing they knew they were loved. Easter. Easter. 
the most beautiful day of our Christian faith, and how so few churches have anyone in them. Why? Because we've forgotten. We've forgotten what it means to knock on our neighbor's door and say, hey, how are you doing? I want you to know something. I'm here for you. Because God's here for me. I don't have to worry about my paycheck. I don't have to worry about my table or my family. I don't have to worry about anything. Because I have a Savior who lives. Nothing in this life can defeat me. So let me see what I can do for you. Let me look at my friends and neighbors and say, I can step aside from my places of privilege. My wealth, my status as an American, these things I can set aside and look foolish to the world and say, I love you. How can I help? How different the world would be if Christians would step outside their bubbles and actually live as though their Savior loves them. How different the world would be if we really embraced Easter, live resurrected lives, to know literal love, to know it's okay, and to then share it with someone else. And you know what? They might not believe you. It's okay. They didn't believe the women either. But are you going to declare it? Are you going to let the world know of who Jesus is? And it's not just this day. In fact, we have about seven weeks worth of an Easter season to proclaim. This is a shifting sermon. We've been talking about discipleship, how to be disciples. Well, for the next many weeks, we're going to talk about where does our strength come from? Where does our hope come from? Because Easter is the center of our faith. It changes everything. It lets you live when you thought you were dead. It helps you set aside your addictions that you thought you'd never conquer. It lets you know that you're loved when your family never loved you. It lets you know there's a friend for you when you've never had a friend. It lets you know that it's okay that if you die, it's not the end of your story, that nothing that happens in this life is the end of the narrative because our Savior lives. It's an empty tomb. There is a hope in the future for every single person. Let's declare that. Let's cry out in the streets today, Hosanna. Let's eat meals with our families and embrace it with joy. Let it seep into our very souls, our lives, our voices, our outlook, how we live, how we talk. Because then the world will be better. Change can happen because it doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter if you're too old. It doesn't matter if you're too young. It doesn't matter. He appeared to women, which sounds strange for me to say it like that, but you know what I mean. They were not the ones that everyone thought to get the message first, and yet God entrusted them to say the message first. You're entrusted to tell the message too. You're entrusted with a glorious truth that can change the world. Are you doing it? Are you telling a friend? Are you inviting a neighbor to a meal? Are you helping those who are persecuted down and out on hard times? Are you accepting help from others when you're in hard times? Because sometimes we're too prideful to do that. All of it works together to be a community that shows a resurrection, that points to redemption, that lasts for eternity. Every day is a new day to try. Every day is the day of Easter. Because we live on this side of the tomb. We don't have to walk around worried. We don't have to wonder what happens on the cross. We know so let us take hope in that. Have strength today. Know that your voice is valid. Know that God loves you, no matter who you are or what you've done. That's the truth of Easter. Would you pray with me today? Lord, help us to set aside our notions of privilege. Help us to remember that we are called to a kingdom where we are all equal, because we're all equal in the grace you give us. 
a grace so strong, so loving, so true, that we can conquer the darkness in our hearts, that we can set aside the ways we think things should be done and listen to the voices around us to build your kingdom bigger, to push down the walls, to open the doors, to invite all we know to know that you love them and that you have come to save us. I ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Would you sing with me our final hymn, Christ Arose, number 564. Go forth in that truth. Grasp hold of it. Let it change your life. He arose for each and every one of you and for each and every single person out there. Go in the love of God the Father, the strength of a risen Savior, Jesus, his Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>